Hello, and welcome to the Investing on the Go podcast, brought to you by Fun Calibre. I'm Chris Sarley, and today I'm with Devin Kalu, manager of the elite-rated Aberdeen Latin American Equity Fund. Thank you for taking the time to speak to us today, Devin. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Could I start by asking you to explain to someone who's outside of financial services your job and, and your role, please? So my job as a fund manager is to take uh, people's hard-earned savings and try and make a good return on those savings so that they can have a better life going forward. And the way we try and do that is we try to invest in companies uh, listed on various stock exchanges in emerging markets uh, and indeed uh, Latin America specifically uh, so that these companies um, or good, well-run companies, share prices will go up and as a consequence, uh, we will make a return on the capital that we've invested. So it's to take people's savings and make a good return by investing in good companies. You've got an MA in international relations and what made you decide to, to get a job investing in emerging markets rather than, say, becoming a diplomat? Well, I'm not sure that I would necessarily cut it as a diplomat. Uh, I have some strong views on things. Um, but I think uh, one of the key things that's required with regard to being a fund manager is to be curious. Uh, because you have to understand an awful lot of stuff. Uh, you have to understand uh, that there's imperfect information. You've got to be curious about how things work. Uh, and as a consequence, uh, I think fund management is a really interesting job. And I've loved it uh, because it's allowed me the opportunity to be able to visit lots of companies, uh, to find out lots of different things, and then take some views on how we want to invest in people's hard-earned money, which I think is a great responsibility and a great privilege. Where was the last place you visited in Latin America and what did you discover? So the last place I visited in Latin America was Brazil and um, discovered that a number of the companies that we had invested in uh, were not going quite according to plan. Um, so I suppose that's the flip side of finding great companies. So you've got to find also, or you sometimes find out, that the companies that you invest in aren't working to plan. And as a consequence, uh, we have divested those companies uh, from the portfolio. And essentially, the issues were twofold for one company in particular. Uh, first of all, the regulatory headwinds for the company had increased. And secondly, the competition had increased. And as a consequence, the prospects for the company making more money or uh, being able to grow its earnings and therefore drive the share price higher was limited. Uh, so as a consequence, we exited the portfolio. So that was on the company level. But one of the things that we also discovered that when we were in Brazil, uh, seeing all these different companies, was actually the tone on the ground had improved. Uh, companies were optimistic about some of the changes that were occurring at the political level, and as a consequence, were beginning to think about investing. And that's really interesting because that ultimately drives economic growth, potentially improves prospects for individuals on the ground, but also the prospects for those companies. Okay. The fund actually recently had two-thirds invested in Brazilian companies. It, you, you've talked about the economy. Is that still the case? Is it still looking optimistic for you there? Or? So, I, yes, uh, the short answer. Um, I think one of the things which is perhaps misunderstood uh, with regard to uh, Brazil is that uh, while the political situation has been difficult in terms of trying to get some agreement on how to push ahead with reform, it doesn't mean that there isn't an understanding that reform is required. But that's quite important because... One of the key deciding factors for how Brazil is going to develop over the next few years is the passage of the pension fund reform and indeed a number of other uh, reforms. And as a consequence of that pension fund reform, we think uncertainty in the economy will be removed. And as a result, uh, companies will start investing again, people will start consuming again. And as a result, economic growth will pick up and opportunities for companies will increase. So um, I think uh, certainly uh, when we look at Brazil, uh, there's lots of things to be optimistic about, but it pays to be also a little sceptical uh, because uh, sometimes these things take a bit longer to transpire than you would hope. You don't have a lot invested in the Andean bloc, Chile, Peru and Colombia. Could you explain why that's the case? Well, I think the first thing is to say that there's fewer companies to invest in in these markets. Um, and the second thing is to say that when we're trying to make an allocation within uh, the, the region, uh, we're looking to see where we think the best opportunities are. So while uh, places like Chile and Peru and one or two others uh, look okay, we don't think they provide the same upside uh, in terms of investment opportunities or investment terms as, say, Brazil or indeed uh, Mexico, for that matter. It's recently been announced that President Trump has $1 billion to, to build his wall between the US and Mexico. And how will this impact investments for you? 
Well, I think that's not just a question for Latin America. That's a question for the world more generally. Uh, Mr. Trump has taken upon himself to challenge the status quo. So whether it's uh, the increased tariffs in Mexico or potential increased tariffs in Mexico or the wall in Mexico or the issues that they have with uh, China, uh, things are changing. Um, I think when we look at the relationship between the U.S. and Mexico, um, our view is that because they're such close neighbors, uh, they are so economically entwined that ultimately compromises will be struck. And therefore, when we look at the uncertainty around the world, uh, we think it's more certain that things will get resolved positively in Mexico and that there will continue to be a strong symbiotic relationship between the two countries. In contrast, um, I think some of the issues that are being faced with China and the US, uh, where it's more confrontational, I think there is more to worry about there. And which is more important to Latin America, I guess, China, the US, and, or you know, either or why? So I'm going to give you a mixed answer and say both are important. Uh, China is important because it's a big demand or a consumer of Latin American commodities. Uh, so for a number of the economies, that's quite an important uh, feature. Uh, that said, uh, the US is important uh, with regard to dollar flows, uh, because many of the companies in Latin America have dollar denominated debt, and indeed, uh, many of the countries borrow in dollars. So what's happening with the dollar, and indeed what the US is doing to support or not uh, the dollar as a, as a consequence. So both need to be uh, worried about or uh, taken uh, into consideration when thinking about the prospects for Latin America. I think one of the things that we do think is going to occur over the next uh, 10 years is that increasingly uh, these economies become more self-reliant in so much as the rise of domestic institutions, domestic investors uh, will help drive these stock markets forward and reduce perhaps the reliance on uh, foreign investors. And that's important because uh, one of the reasons why the US uh, and indeed China is a is a, is a key issue, is that it very much drives sentiment for foreigners in terms of thinking about Latin America. So if there's more domestic investors, that can balance it out a little and you get a less volatile, more stable um, investing uh, regime. Thank you very much for your time, Devon. I'm Chris Sarley from Fun Calibre. Thank you very much for joining us.